Hi there, this is Pet Beats. Welcome to another video. We're going to be going through this RMB beat I made back in June time. And I think around July time, that's when I'd managed to get the song going with James, which this beat ended up being used for. So uh, I'll just be going through all the different little parts of it. But honestly, it's quite a simple beat. There's um, really not much to it at all. Obviously, the main guitar loop, I didn't make this, I found. I just found it on Splice and uh, I instantly knew what type of drums I wanted on it. I knew, I definitely knew I wanted to like keep it simple because, as you can hear, quite a lot of like melodic elements to it, so I, I really didn't want to add too much to it. So we've got this main sample here. Yeah, it was really giving me like that uh, Corday song that he's got with Bear and Lil Durk. Similar type of vibes to that. That's what I wanted to go for. So all I did was uh, just take out some of the bassy low end from the guitar. Because that's always usually present in uh, guitar samples. And then all I did was add this gazing guitar preset in RC20 just to give it a bit more colour. So um, before, it sounds like this. Yeah, you can hear like there's a bit of muddiness in there, but once uh, we've got those effects on, it sounds a little uh, cleaner now. So I actually use like a perk in this beat, because um, I think a lot of the time nowadays we've used like a lot of snares in like very well known beats so we're, we're coming to using like perks and stuff as snares uh, which uh, I think is really cool so we've just got this one really like lean already and so this pattern here we've just got just hitting like er on every two really yeah so that second snare is just in every other every other two bar so uh, what that's doing it just it gives it a bit of a different hit every time the every other note is coming once I had that bounce um, I think next I added the kick so it's just about getting like a simple kick pattern just to go along with that snare so here we've got here we've got this pattern Yeah, it's really very simple and kicks very punchy, but like also deep. Um, so all I did it did to it was I actually messed around on the EQ a bit and just boosted around the around the two thousand hertz and the low end and took out some of the middle here and the high end I took off. And then we got a compressor on here. Usually, what I do if I'm if I want to compress the kick or like drums or something because then they don't feel like they're at the right volume that's usually when I'll do it is so I'll, I'll come to the presets here and just go to the drums preset and then just alter with the gain and uh, maybe the type as well um, maybe the ratio and the threshold but I usually leave these how they are and then we've just got the soft clip on, on there just rising it a bit so before all of that it just sounded like that it's quite low in volume compared to it's uh, making it really punchy those effects so after that we've got this other snare that's hitting in like every two bars here sort of in a weird place but um, it just kind of went with the bounce of everything so as well we've got this perc percussion like uh, it's not even really percussion, it's more like an effect, but when I uh, found it in this drum kit I was going through, this Navy D one, uh, I really liked how it sounded with everything that was playing. So uh, that's just hitting on the, on the 3 bar, and it's only in every 8 bar that it's, um, it's going. So it's sort of like halfway through each pattern, if that makes sense. And then 
finally we've got this other percussion just like another snare uh, accent sort of hitting off the other one here so I'll just play all those drums together so you can hear that Yeah, really like very simple bounce um, and it's a lot, this whole beat's a lot slower BPM than I usually do. Um, I'm usually up in like the 140s or uh, 120, 130 but this is 73 so it's, uh, it's much slower than uh, I'm usually used to which I kind of liked, like it helped me uh, slow things down a bit and uh, take my time with this beat and you know not over not overdo it. So next we've got this hi-hat pattern. I think this is also like a MIDI I found because you'll see I've sort of muted a few notes here but I'd only recommend using like MIDI's of hi-hats if like you're really struggling to find a good pattern because I think it can be quite easy to just like use a two-step all the time. Going through like MIDI's and just pasting it on a hi-hat uh, if you found a good sound in hi hat, that is, um, it can be really helpful to, you know, sort of like complete the process if you add in it last, like I'm pretty sure I did here. So we just got this hi hat, and uh, you'll hear that's got a bit of reverb on, tiny bit here, uh, but it's quite wet in the preset. So this is just the drum room preset, I'm pretty sure. And yeah, those those other drums I just showed you, they don't have any effects on. Yeah, it was just. I liked how everything sounded, so I, I didn't really think it needed too much mixing. I mean, obviously, there's the process after uh, the beat uh, goes out, where it gets mastered and all that. But well, that's a uh, that's a completely different thing. So, anyway, back to this hi hat. So, this pattern is just uh, it's sort of a two step. So, yeah, it's just got some rolls here and there. And some extra notes. I've got one stop in there every two bars. So yeah let's hear what all of those drums sound like with the guitar sample now. So yeah so those rolls and like the muted notes in this two-step pattern it really filled up the uh, space left in this beat. So you, before, it, very like sort of empty. So this hi hat basically just filling up the last part of that space. Um, obviously not too much because uh, you want an artist top on it or whatever. But yeah, it, it really uh, completed the vibe there. So what we've got now, um, you'll see, there's not really any effects here either. All we've got now is the bass, so this uh, it wasn't as hard as it usually is for me to find bass because it is definitely usually the hardest part for me. Um, but I found this bass, it's quite a deep sub, um, but it's not too long, uh, in this 7 ink kit and I really liked how it sounded with everything. I just knew I needed to put in the right pattern. So. The pattern we've got here, it's pretty much just following the bass notes on here and it's following on the kick. So I already had the kick which was pretty simple so usually what I'll do if I've got everything and I just need the bass I'll copy the kick pattern into the bass um, in like a muted channel so sort of like this then it's sort of like in the background here so you can see where the kick's hitting obviously it's not playing here but you can sort of choose where you want the bass to go now so yeah you'll see the bass isn't necessarily hitting on every kick now it's definitely hitting on every bar but it's sort of in between it in a way, just, you know, like I said with the high house, filling up like the last element of the space. So the bass was definitely the final thing I wanted to add. 
and it was just you know like I say finding the right pattern so sort of like a simple uh, bass guitar pattern basically to complement the normal guitar so let's have a look at the notes in the sample and we'll sort of compare here so you see it comes in on D sharp and that's hitting on D sharp there that's sort of F sharp and D sharp there and then on the second bar here we've got like an A sharp so it's just basically just messing around with the notes basically it's just what sounds good to you with everything else usually, I think usually why I leave the bass to last is because it can be a very like simplistic element of it and I usually just want to add it on top of everything I've added rather than start it off with it because it's um, it's not always easy to create a bounce once you've added the bass in first if you know what I mean finally we've just got the other melodic elements in it but like I said earlier the uh, guitar is quite melodic so I didn't really think I needed it but it's, it's just to add on in the hook so to speak which is it up from just being the guitar all the time so I've just gone into BBC Symphony Orchestra so this is a free plugin you can get um, and I've just gone into the violin preset and sort of followed on from the bass notes in a way uh, just going up and down in a nice pattern so It just gives it that extra like symphonic element to it um, and it makes it sound like a bit more professional in a way so yeah we've got that string um, and we've also got a flute that only comes in like right at the end I think it was just nice to like have a different like string instrument at the end so even then you're not you're not expecting it's just gonna be the string the whole time so yeah that's just the flute preset in BBC Symphony so um got an EQ taking all the lows off and some RC20 again just to make it a little brighter and then the flute it's it's literally just a EQ taking some lows it's a bit of a weird one but yeah that's that's it for the beat if you're interested in learning more about the song uh let me know and maybe I'll uh, go into it a bit deeper in the process of like making the song but yeah, if you want to check out the song, that would be greatly appreciated. It's on uh, all the platforms, so uh, you can check it out on YouTube, uh, Spotify, Apple, whatever. And I'll be linking it throughout this video anyway, so you should have seen it pop up. Uh, but definitely make sure to check that out. If uh, you're after an R&B beat that's a bit more like from scratch, so to speak, so it's not just like using a loop, one that goes a bit more in depth into like the melodies and stuff definitely check out the last video I did on this Pharrell beat I made about two months ago but yeah uh, if you enjoyed make sure to leave a like leave a comment let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next video